Uh oh. Oh no, where's Nafi? I know she Nafi? just walked away a minute we need her. <laughs> oh, no, no. I don't see a picture. Oh, wait a minute, who's that? Is that Ghana? Ghana Batri. Oh, is that Ghana? Yes! Woo! Is that you? day for us to have a chance to connect with each other and see about the the work that everybody is doing um, and so we're gonna do a quick roll call to see who's in the house so that when we call out your your site give us a big hello okay yes okay okay is Malawi here okay. yes <laughs> no, okay. All right, okay. We need more than a yes. We need a yeah. <laughs> Okay. Is, is Springfield, Massachusetts here? <laughs> is Ada Ghana here? <laughs> oh, I'm, and I'm all big. Is Louisville, Kentucky here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, my stuff got in the way. Louisville is here. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, okay, I ruined that moment. So let me give you my eyes. Okay. Louisville, is Louisville here? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and we have some other like special guests who are joining us kind of individually. So let's hear is Miss Amanda here? Woo 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 woo. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Alicia here. Hi everybody. Woo! Yay. <laughs> and is Miss Susan here? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and Nafi was here, but she'll be back, I bet. <laughs> so um, let's get started. Um, Susan would like to share a little bit about the history of what we're doing here today. Good morning, everyone, and afternoon. I'm, I'm, I'm a little emotional myself, too. It's been many years. AC and I started Rich Kids. We started with the day the African child with the video conference. Really, in our minds, we wanted to bring all of us together so we could learn from each other, support each other, get to know each other. And that's really the focus behind the video conferences. So when we first started, we just had, we had United States and we had South Africa because they, the African child, is based out of the history of, of the South Africa youth. And it just has grown over the years so that so many young people have been able to meet new friends, learn from their brothers and sisters all around the world. And it's just so inspiring. Happy to see you all here today, continuing to learn and share from each other. We are really all one. And that's what we want you to get from this experience and, and continue to communicate and share. So that's really what this day is about. This is one day 
out of hopefully the rest of your lives that you all will be connected with your brothers and sisters across the waters. <laughs> Thank you so much, Susan. I'm getting messages from people. Amanda Nafi said, can you re-invite her? She should be able to just come back on, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Can I try? Oh, uh, and um, this is for everybody. Felix, just sent a reminder, but for all the sites, can you please make sure you take photos today and then send them on to us um, yes. so that we can post them all and they'll be up all on the Facebook page and, and all of that, okay? So we're about to get into the actual, present, the actual presentations. Um, <laughs> this is the order that we're gonna go in. Um, first, it's gonna be Malawi, then Springfield, then um, Ghana, then Bridge Kids Louisville, and then um, Bridge um, the Open Lines Project here in Louisville. Okay, so um, if everybody everybody should be aware, what's going to happen is after the group presents, um, then we get a chance to ask them questions. So pay close attention or make comments. It's going to be really bad if somebody presents and nobody has any questions or comments, okay? And so um, be, so we want you to um, really participate. And then they'll get a chance to even respond to some of your questions after that. Amanda is going to be muting everybody's microphones um, so that the person who is talking is, the, is um, uh, just on the screen or whoever is presenting at that moment. So she's going to be controlling that. So that means when it's time to make a comment, we need to see that you have a comment to make from your site, so you've got to raise your hand, all right, so that we can see that you're ready to talk. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right, let's get started. Okay, BK Malawi, it's, um, it's on you. Okay, thank you very much for uh, putting us on the first uh, presentation. So, and over to one who is presenting about it, Malawi, because uh, I'll just comment some of it. Let me allow uh, Carol to present Malawi. Thank you so much. Hello. On behalf of my family in Malawi, I'm Charity Wanda. I just want to explain, I just want to make a few explanation on what youth in Malawi, what challenges youth in Malawi are meeting. What of challenges like HIV and death, teenage pregnancies, poverty. There are also, we have groups in our Malawi, we have groups with drugs. When we meet, we talk a lot of challenges. We find solutions on that. And we discuss gender, entrepreneurship, and some other. Some other. So on gender, we talked about how girls can be empowered. As in Malawi, people, they have a belief that when someone is a girl, they don't, they, they don't give chance to girls to say no to things they do not approve of. Girls are discriminated in at works, at schools. So we talked about gender. We <laughs> talked each other. We talked about discrimination as such. Mm. Yeah, so we, we discussed some solutions to all these problems for it. For HIV and AIDS, there are so some cultures that perform different casual practices that put girls at risk of contracting HIV and AIDS, especially to the youth. Girls are being forced into early marriages, and they, when they come to marriage, they are discriminated, they are accused. So we just girls. Okay, uh, let me also comment on that. Uh, of course, uh, according to social economic power, um, Malawi National Police, uh, um, 
my own demographic health survey and the national AIDS commission is explaining about all issues which are actually as being explained for example, on the national youth policy, it is explaining that uh, currently in Malawi, 13% of uh, males, 13% of females, especially young girls and boys. Uh, 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 poverty, uh, uh, child mind, and the, uh, and how they are, as far as open to that, then it passes, uh, when it is not for the social interfacing skills, in Malawi, don't have enough of the business. Um, I think, uh, or even at least I can agree with that because of uh, visited some of you in Malawi with uh, other members visiting us. So, facing lots of challenges, or even uh, as they already said, girls they are not given chance to go to school because they some believe, they believe that uh, when you're getting a girl, the girl will not support the family, will support the family of uh, a, a, a man. Whereby this is uh, encouraging uh, young girls not to go to school. So we have some solution as already said that uh, as an organization, as a youth, we need to, to have something on the ground whereby it's safe, sustained, safe, open, safe, independent, whereby we, we need to have um, a small something, a capital, whereby as a youth we should do something on the ground instead of uh, depending on our family. Because our family is a uh, poor family, uh, they're not having something you know, to give us to start small businesses. Business, uh, so we need as uh, youth to do um, small business uh, in our group, so we should not depend on our family. Okay, Jack. So we come up with a project uh, empowerment. Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so we come up with a project called uh, Youth Economic Empowerment whereby we need to, to train young people, we need to give them the capital so they need to start a small business. Mm. So the, uh, the main goal of this project is to contribute uh, youth inclusive economic growth and poverty reduction uh, through sustainable and gaining employment opportunities. Because um, we have said that uh, if we're giving them some capitals whereby they can Start small business, safe employment, instead of depending on the other NGOs, other government departments. In Malawi, it's a poorest country in Africa. And this is a country has visited some of the youth uh, in areas. So this, I think, so. pick up objectives. Uh, the first a uh, specific objective is uh, to improve the employability of uh, 145 youth uh, in rural areas. So we need to promote uh, access to employment opportunities for young people. And three, uh, we need to give them the capacity on how to start small businesses. So, on this project, we, we suggested that uh, we should target young people in the age of uh, 10 to 29 age, because uh, this age is the one who are facing lots of challenges. And even according to social economic profile in Chikawa, uh, national uh, and other 
researchers that these age groups are the ones who are affecting most in Malawi. We are expected that uh, the youth itself will be in various development activities in our catchment area, in their locality, in their family. And not only that, uh, we believe that this project will contribute towards economic empowerment among the young people in Malawi. So, in short, let me go like that. Of course, we have uh, in how this project will be sustained. But um, first, uh, to start our project, we, we do consult our community leaders within the community, government officials, consulting other NGOs, both local and international NGOs. Uh, by doing ourselves, doesn't mean that uh, we do we know everything on the ground, we know everything uh, in our community, but uh, we do involve various departments, various NGOs, sort of give us some skills to make the project enough to make the project uh, uh, well. Uh, so we encourage that uh, this community, uh, this wants to be the five. 25 percent. For example, uh, let me uh, give an example of the project which uh, uh, we are doing at the moment. We provide some local available resources. For example, uh, on the agribusiness project, the land, the young people, to make sure that the project should be sustainable because if we give them everything whereby they can misuse the resources because uh, they are not contributing something towards the project. That, um, even the youth themselves, uh, the communities, they should contribute something towards the project to make it sustainable. Thank you. Stacy, can you unmute yourself? Oh no. I'm feeling. Thank you. Okay. Now my okay, good, right? Thank you so much, Joshua. I'm sorry we had difficulty hearing some of it because of the connection. And so yeah. I will just recap just a little bit. Um, and then we can ask questions to get clarification. So from my understanding, one of your major issues is girls' early marriage and not having the opportunities to go to school or make certain choices um, in their lives. And so you all are working on um, some businesses um, to give girls options to be able to have some uh, control in their lives. Is that the basic idea? Joshua, did I get that right? Is that the basic idea? Small starting small businesses. That's uh, for the BSF employment instead of. Uh, but uh, depending on depending on the government departments, because uh, uh, it is uh, sixty to seventy percent of uh, young people they, they just very scared. So for young people, they are not working. So they just finish their education and then and they just need uh, to getting anything to do and get them here. Okay, I heard a little bit more and it was still hard to understand. So you said instead of depending on the government, it's um, creating opportunities for employment. Is that it? Yes. Okay. I know. Okay. I know. Yeah, exactly. Hello. 
Hello, I have a question. Um, I was wondering if, um, could you tell us a little bit more about the, the businesses that you all are uh, starting and maybe one of you can talk about it as well, like what is their experience? So speak up really loud. If, can everybody hear me? Yeah, yes. I think oh, that okay. it's just speaking loud. Yeah, I was wondering if you all could just tell us a little bit more about uh, the, business, the small businesses that you all have started. Um, I'm interested in learning more about that, and then maybe one of you can talk about it also. And who, is, who are you? I'm Ty Tiana, and I'm with British Kids International. <laughs> 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 Uh, can you please come again with your issue of speak loud? I think because of our um, network connectivity uh, yes. there. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your businesses, the small businesses that you all have started. Um, I just want to learn more. I think that a lot of us probably want to learn more also about just your small businesses that you've started for girls' rights and for um, equality among women. And so if, if you could just talk a little bit more about that, what do those businesses look like? What are they called? Um, what are some of the, you know, what kinds of businesses are they? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Before I respond to this question, let me give it uh, to um, member with you they can start responding about it stacy you have a question yeah okay we're, we're waiting we're waiting on um them to answer the question that was just asked and then you'll go next okay uh Joshua are you all uh, Okay. Uh, uh, of course, I mean, type of businesses. Right. Yeah. Uh, some of them start uh, a butcher man, uh, like buying goods, uh, buying a uh, big and selling it. They, are, uh, they should start a group dealer whereby they need to, to buy some farm inputs in the community because. Uh, uh, most of the people in the community, they are buying their farm inputs away from the community. They are spending lots of money for transportation from where they are buying the farm inputs. So some that uh, uh, whereby they need to sell a farm inputs within the community. Within the community, they should buy uh, this farm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. And and um so can um let's hear from Springfield. You had a question? Yes, we did. And uh, let me also uh, uh add on that. Uh, some of the adding like um uh, uh uh -oh. Can you see more time? And buying a different um, a groceries, uh, like swap other areas. Not only that, um, as uh, one told, uh, said about uh, selling farm imports, some of them are willing to start uh, by doing activities um, uh, and selling the products from the farming. Cool. Okay, great. Okay, um, Andrea or Springfield? 
All right, so um, we have one student had a question. Do the girls that get married at young ages still go to school? Did you hear her? No, please repeat it. If you get married at a young age, do they still go to school after they get married? If you get married, if girls get married at early age, do they still go to school? Yeah. Come again with your question. Did you hear the question, Malawi? Yes, I'm saying, can you come on? I miss yes, the question was, if girls get married at an early age, do they still go to school? Challenge in Malawi because the uh, age of uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 is already having a child. Some, of course, they are school, but some they are not because of uh, poverty. They don't have to go back to school. And some because uh, their colleagues are already in high uh, uh, education. So for them to go back to school, I think like, uh, uh, that's like uh, someone has uh, dropped their school in almost uh, five or four to five years back to school so some they are laughing uh, about her laughing about him that they are not going back to school but uh, we as organization we as, as a youth we do encourage each other to go back to school but most of them they're not going back to school that's why they're choosing to uh to do some community instead of going back to school Thank you. All right. Okay, so if there's one more question, um, if not, we will move on. Any more questions for Malawi? No. Okay. So we thank. Do I see a hand? I don't know. Okay. No. So we thank you so so much for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm back. <laughs> Oh, okay, so Springfield, Massachusetts, Miss Andrea's class, you're up. Okay, so we have um, been working on our project. So I have these two lovely young ladies here, Navia and Giuliani. Um, and we have our posters that we created as well. Um, so I'm going to let them talk about their their focus um, and everything like that. So guys, guys you go ahead and go. Just, um, can you let us know if you can hear them? I know they're a little soft spoken, but. Tell them to speak up. So we celebrate the advancement of women and girls right in our community. We commend those who have brought us such achievement. In their honor, we continue this movement and today we pledge to make a difference. We want to come together to support women's rights around the world. Okay, okay, it's a little bit distorted. I'm not hearing clearly yeah. what you're saying. Oh, well, even here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you very clearly. Okay, so you guys gotta talk, speak up, okay? Oh, can I hear you? Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> nice, closer. Yes, that's good. Let's right hear. <laughs> Okay, so, so want me to read this? We chose girls' rights because we think we chose girls' rights because we think that we think that it's unfair how boys could do certain things in girls and how girls have to leave school and get married at young ages and other stuff and abuse and sex trafficking and stuff like that. So what we're doing is we're doing like a rally, a rally to support um, girls' rights, and we're hoping that it will make a change in our community and soon around the world. 
Clap, 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 clap. Something smart. I just was getting heavier and heavier. So I've been getting a little shy. Um, the process to getting to this um, was. So we chose Girls' Rights because the class voted um, on the fact that they, the fact that they felt that abuse of girls was really prominent in the community. Um, and so as a class of 30 something, they thought that, oh my gosh, like abuse um, is one of the issues that we experience a lot um, and that they're very familiar with. And it's something that really has hit close to home. Um, so we've been battling how do we create a project um, so they wanted to do a rally and we're supposed to have a rally later today um, so they made posters if you guys want to show the posters that you guys made um, flyers um, collected items for the community um, wow. and really work to really learn more I think we're at a different phase where we're still gathering information about our community and so there's some of the things that they wanted to share they want to share with their, um, with their community. So, um, our principal just wanted to send a quick hello. So, over there, you know, over there. All right. How are you? How are you? Honestly, uh, our kids are very excited about this. Thank you for working with us. We have a lot of great things planned. We actually have a rally this afternoon and all the stuff that worked really, really, really hard. So thank you guys for all the work that you're doing. And I'm glad that we can collaborate. All right. So back to- oh, <laughs> so, so we have a lot of um, things. Of, I'm gonna send it back to the girls. Um, so we just want to give you a little bit more. We've been working as a class to discover a lot of things. We've had poems written. Um, a group of young girls actually wrote a poem about girls' rights from their hearts. So it's, it's been a, a self-discovery and a community discovery as well. So, Navia, Juliani, I'm going to turn it back to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're excited. We want to hear this poem. And your beautiful faces are fantastic. You guys look great. Yes. <laughs> Here's the poem. They were, they were not prepared to deliver their poem, but they do have it. I can oh. 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 <laughs> Any brave volunteers? Read it! Read it! Read it! Read it! Read it! Read it. Read it. Read it. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. All right, so, um, so we're gonna regroup and have our girls keep talking for a minute while we try to get this. Ooh, I'll check. They have it, but we're not prepared to read it. Okay, you guys are right here. This is not a selfie. I know. Okay, uh, do you all have more to present? Yes. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, we pledge to honor the diversity of women respecting each other, faith, choices, customs, beliefs, characteristics, and qualities, because what bonds us is much stronger than what di difference, than the difference from us. <laughs> we pledge to find mentors in order to prepare this, prepare for this world. It is an emphasis of a camping trip, a job opportunity, or a scholarship because young have great potential. What? We pledge to also stand up for girls' rights and respect females in general, even if we're all alone. So as a school 
community. We literally, um, there's 126 students here, and they all wrote a pledge. Um, they, they have a pledge that they wrote to girls' rights and to furthering girls' rights. And so it says, I pledge to, and um, they all have them on paper. So we're going to take a picture so we can show you guys all of the pledges because all the students wrote them. So they're really excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, our, okay, is there anything else you want to say in terms of your presentation before we ask questions? Um, the, yeah, I think the presentation part is good. The poem is, um, I'm trying to pull it up on the computer right now, but uh, the presentation, I think that, is that it, Juliani, Maria? Is that the end of your presentation? Yeah, so it's the end of presentation. Excellent. Thank you so much. Excellent. Does, does anyone, okay, who has questions? Ms. Greenfield. I have, oh, is that, that, is that Licia? Yes, Licia, go yes. ahead. Hi, girls. Great job. Girls and guys. Sorry. Great job. Um, I have Hi. <laughs> and you guys are beautiful. Don't hide away from the camera. Um, I have two small questions for you guys. Can you guys share with me a little bit more details about what the girl rights that you're fighting for? Like, what have you noticed in your community that you're fighting for right now? Well, what I noticed in my community is, like, abuse, no. like... <laughs> what I noticed in my community is abuse and how females get treated, like, verbally abused, sexually abused, physical abuse. Like, abuse is crazy. <laughs> Anyone else, or is that in general what you guys are fighting for today in your rally? Like females at school get verbally this is, this is, oh so, um female females at school get like disrespected by guys sometimes. Well, a lot. Females at school get disrespected by guys sometimes a lot by their hair or their eye color or their skin color or how skinny they are or how thick they are. <laughs> and then what, what is the rally going to consist of? Like, well, how will that come together today? How will you get everyone rounded up for the rally? And what will actually happen at the rally? What will happen at the rally is that we're all going to go downstairs. What will happen at the rally is that we're all going to go downstairs to the auditorium. We are going to go downstairs to the auditorium, and we have certain groups. We have the pledge yeah. group. The, I'm in the pledge group. Um, the pledge group, the rally, the posters. And, and the group. What's happened is that, like, we want to change in our school. We want our school to start respecting women better, women in girls. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I have a question. Um, can I add something real quick, please? Sure. Um, I also wanted to say that something that inspired us a lot was also a young, a, well, not a young, a, a lady or girl from Afghanistan. Her name is Malala. I'm not quite sure what her last name is. At Pakistan, never mind. Sorry. Um, and we used to speak out for girls' rights, and uh, we watched um, numerous documentations, stuff, documentaries about her, and we also learned that there was a terrorist group where she lived that used to that blows up and destroyed schools, so students didn't, um, so st students couldn't go to school. So like that, they didn't want um girls to learn a lot of stuff and to speak out more so that so that um they try to have more freedom so after after all that happened she got shot in um she got shot and almost died because of what she tried to do she tried to help on girls she tried to help her country but many things went wrong nice Great. Well done. And so, so that was your inspiration. I think that's wonderful. And I, I'm glad to see, I was, my question was going to be about how did the boys feel about this, but it was really great to see, you know, a boy also talking, you know, about this passionately. 
So thank you. Are there any more questions for Springfield? Yes, here in Malawi. Uh, one way. So the question is, let me give to this one. So, uh, my, my name is Man Chagaramba. Hi. 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 My question is, uh, Defend then in Rwanda. And then uh, of young uh, of youth. That's my two questions. Um, can you please repeat? We couldn't. We could not hear the question. Okay, it's uh, saying that um, in there is there is uh, in the constitution of uh, the government constitution. Is there any controlling for the major which control the rights of girls or not? What's the question? The other question. Is, control of girls. Right? Did you hear the question? Yeah. Yeah, in the constitution. Oh. Yes. Is there any question where where is that? Controlling the rights of girls, also or not. The second, you are saying most of girls are being abused uh, within the community. Is there a high drop out of girls in the schools or no? If yes, as you, you are working with the young people. So something on the ground which is uh, controlling the girls' rights. That's it. Okay, I think the question is, are you doing something on the ground to support girls' rights? Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, the actions that we are doing to help girls' rights is that we're still like developing and we're trying to push through still. But like the purpose of this rally is trying to get our point across and tell people that girls' rights matter. And as far as the, the Constitution, uh, yes. does anyone want to answer that question? So, um, is um, is there anything about like girls' rights in the Constitution? So, um, I don't know the U.S. So the idea is that there is protection, um, but I think what our school community and our Springfield community have experienced is um, the protection only protects some. Uh, when you talk about on the ground at times, um, a lot of our school community and our community have experienced it. Um, drug abuse, homelessness, um, I think like the numbers in our district is very A lot of that is connected to domestic violence. Um, a lot of uh, students can attest to firsthand experiencing abusive situations, seeing aunts, mothers, sisters, uh, even some of them themselves having uh, had abuse. While there are protections um, and they are protected in the Constitution, we're realizing that that's not enough and um, we're trying to do something. Exactly, thank you. And, and it's only been a few, um, a few decades that women in this country have even had the right to vote. Originally in the U.S. Constitution, they did not. And so, yeah, so there are, yeah, anyway. You have a um, question here from Autumn. Hi, I'm Autumn. Um, is this rally going to be like a one-day thing, or is it going to be continued? So is the rally going to be a one-day thing? Yes. Is it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes this will be a one-day thing. Thank you so much, Springfield. Woohoo! You're welcome. Yeah.
great. Yeah, so yeah. They wait, should wait. have sent us pictures from the rally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, it looks like Sana is trying to. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like Donna is trying to get back on. Um, let me just say they are not on. They're just trying to reconnect. So what we're going to do, um, Bridge Kids Louisville, actually, um, with your project, you're about to get started, okay? Let me turn this to Kaori. Okay. <laughs> I, oh my God! Sorry, we're coming. Oh, let me move out the way. How about that? Here. Come oh, Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Hi. Um, I'm, uh, I'm with Bridge Kids International, um, and my project is the First Friends Louisville. Our purpose, our issue is to uh, focus on bullying uh, with um, children in schools. Uh, so what we do is try to break the barrier of um, African, African students and African-American students. Uh, personally, what I do is I try to teach African-Americans about the similarities that we have to African students. So, um, our goal is, or our purpose, is to um, help African students um, and talk to them and, you know, see how they're doing um, and help them with resources. Um, with those resources, uh, I have a <laughs> bag. Oh, we have bags? Um, and in it, um, it could be various things, like we give them like perfume and deodorant and stuff to help them um, as they have arrived here um, in Louisville. And we visit them when they've been here for six months. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. And they are refugees that come here to Louisville. Um, so like, give them like, um, okay. So just stuff like that, um, basic needs uh, that we give them. Um, uh, so this project is going um, has impacted us a lot because we are learning, um, talking to people uh, that are that look like us, um, and we are uh, helping them and building with them. I um, mean, listening to their experiences from Africa till when they get here. Um, Okay. So, do I talk about after six months? Okay. So after six months, we go and visit them um, and talk to them and see how they're doing. Um, and we give them the bags, like I showed you, um, and ask them, you know, do they have jobs and and uh, their experiences and what they've been through so far uh, as they've been here in America and Louisville specifically. Um, and what I enjoy most is uh, hearing uh, their perspective of like, 
you know, one time this guy said it was a, when he was here it was his first time seeing snow. So like listening to their experiences and how they're very different from mine. Uh, and what I really enjoy is giving them resources and helping them and showing them that, you know, people that look like them are out there trying to help uh, as well. Thank you, um, Tiari. Does um you stay right there? Okay. Does um anybody have any questions about the first friends local project? Um, I just want to say awesome work. I know it's been a long time in, in the making, so I'm so proud of you guys. That's a really really big deal. Um, so yay! I'm so proud of you guys. That, that's really really good. Uh, we're proud of you. We're over here clapping. So <laughs> yes. Any more questions? Um, I wanted to do more. Understanding is uh, having a friend of mine. They're coming to visit the BK office. <laughs> staff. No. We didn't uh, understand. Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat that? Okay, I'm saying uh, ending. It's like uh, you have a student volunteering program. We still didn't. We still didn't get it. Did you ask about what? Uh, students are coming to. Okay, I um um can in Springfield, can you all just stop moving around a little bit because the camera won't get off of you? Just just for a couple minutes, a couple seconds. Okay, now I'm allowing you. Go yes, ahead, um, saying that um, my understanding is like BK is having a volunteer program whereby uh, students they are coming to BK staff or BK uh, office as products. I think so. In this project, are you supporting other? Are we supporting uh, uh, BK country or is it within the same? Okay, yeah, the I, think, I think he's asking like where are these like the people you're supporting, where are they coming from? Like they're the they're the refugees that are coming from various countries, right? So he's asking for like their bridge kids groups. With refugees of the African diaspora. So we've worked with Cubans, we worked with Congolese, um, Senegalese, Somalians, um, and that's yeah. pretty much it. Um, it it can it varies from er a lot. Ah, okay. So according to this project, are you sending uh, even other volunteers or other students to other BK groups, or it's just to only within the BK office office in your USA? Yeah, no, this is just in Louisville. Yeah, this is just Louisville's project. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can I can I just say this is great while we're sharing because you get ideas about what other BK groups are doing. It might be something that other cities, other countries, other BK groups may want to take on or link with so you can support each other. Yeah. So Okay, and thank you. So is that do I see Ghana there? Felix, is that you? His mic is muted. Felix, if that's you with the sky behind you, you're, please unmute your mic.
Felix, can you unmute your microphone, please? There's a little microphone button that you can just yeah. click it. Click your microphone button. Oh, no. Felix. Let me see if I can call him. I think he's on his phone. Hey, Felix, can you unmute your microphone, please? Your microphone is on mute. Group is not on, so you can go ahead and make your presentation, okay? Can you make it for them? Just talk about what you all are doing because they're not on. Okay, so, but unmute your microphone. Okay. Yeah, press, exactly, press the microphone sign. All right, thank you. We got to learn Google Hangout. Yeah. Yeah. We got to learn Google <laughs> <laughs> If they were here, we could present. Actually, I would love to have you all present now, but folks are out of the world. Okay. Well, we're waiting for Felix to come on. I'm waiting for the Louisville other group to come back in the rooms so then they can present. Why don't you all get set up over here? Okay. We're going to play it. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, um, Amanda, do you have the video from Louisville, like, queued yeah. up to go? Yeah. Yep. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Why don't we play their video? Cool. One While we're waiting. All right, and I will share my screen. Let me just open it up. This is a video that um, our group here is a um, group here that we've been working with, Bridge Kids International, um, and some local artists have been working with, and they're going to present their project. Um, it has to do with uh, violence in the city, and they've created a video, and we're going to show it to you all now. Yes. With original music, by the way. <laughs> yes. Fancy. So we're that poetry performance. <laughs> hey, for real. And, and we'll, yeah, we'll do that while we're waiting for Felix to get on and for the team to assemble here in the room. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, so you have to. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Everyone can see it? Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one bullet. You would think when someone is shot, they die and it's all over. But really, it's just the start. Just think, you have your mom, your daddy, their mom, their daddy, brother, sister, auntie, uncle, mentor, pastor, community, even down to the youngest kid that looks up to you when you didn't even know. Next time you think about pulling that trigger, think about that one bullet that can mess up the bigger picture. All it takes is one mistake to change your life in one decision to get it right.
Let go of the hate, let go of the anger, let go of the pain. Working on your future, not looking at the pain, but looking at the rest. Look into my eyes, followed by the pine. Just working on community where I live. Just asking for some help to raise my kids. Let go, let go. and skill building workshops we've opened new lines of communication and explored violence as both a personal and a social issue we've been examining our stories and having unlikely conversations on how it touches the individual to family to the community to the world and back through the chain has created the possibility for understanding shifts and perceptions of self others and neighborhoods it's also opened new opportunities for healing and change in our community well, all right. 
You want to take shots? Yes. You want to take shots? <laughs> Introduce yourself. That was Autumn, by the way. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, Hi. <laughs> you guys hear me? Yes, well, thank you. Thank okay. You. All right. Um, well, I'm Jalen. Um, so basically, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the community aspects of what we're doing and um, basically why we felt violence would be imperative, uh, imperative project for uh, our city. Um, so why we chose it, we basically chose violence simply because when you look at violence in America, but if you, it's, it's bad, but when you look at it in Louisville and uh, harvest communities such as West Louisville, violence is just crazy. Just um, the last three years, we've seen the numbers like rise um, astronomically. So we basically thought it would be um, best to kind of basically find a, a way to cure the violence. And with it, we learned that violence doesn't just affect one person. Like if you saw in the video, it like it affects the community. You know, ultimately, I thought, you know, it was just between the victim and the perpetrator. But really, when you look at violence, it's, it affects everyone, you know, down to the youngest person that you don't even know. So um, just in Louisville, some of the facts. Uh, from 2015, we had, I think it was like 100-something people murdered. And in the first six months of 2017, it's up to like 70 people already. And so I, that's one of the reasons why we feel you know, we need to tackle violence. I'll have more later. <laughs> 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 Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Elijah, and um, I'm here to tell you all about this project we got going on. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so we decided that the uh, best initiative to combat this violence was going to be uh, this project that we call Contagious Love. We figured um, throughout um, through these violent actions that are taking place, we recognize that one component that's remained like, you know, a constant that there seems to be a lack of love and community. Um, we as African Americans uh, are disconnected due to a plethora of reasons, and because of that, you know, it makes it easy for us to kill each other. And if you add in, you know, the poverty piece, that just makes it like, you know, uh, basically a factory that pushes out like, you know, violent incidents. So we figured that we would go ahead and create these bags, um, bags of love, as we call them, and fill them with like with resources that people need, such as, you know, toothbrushes and um, other basic essentials that you need throughout the day, but we also wanted to add in a black history piece so that we can understand that, you know, that we are all interconnected. We're all family. We're all we got. And um, hoping that through there, people will then continue to pass on this information like amongst their um, peers. And eventually, like, hopefully we'll see the violence decrease as a result. Essentially, we're trying to build um, community capacity uh, through this initiative. And to get to the point where we see each other as brothers and sisters rather than like, you know, distant strangers. So, yeah, that's basically the, the gist of it. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was also, um, there was this pass on piece that we also wanted to add. So we figured that we would get two bags, basically. Um, one that was full of the um, resources I just named and then one that was basically empty. With the empty bag, the person who receives it would then go and um, give it to uh, care about and put a piece of themselves like within the bag, trying to keep it like you know, uh, pass and go, like keep it going and stuff. And um, from there, like that's that also like results in community capacity because now, like you know, this one bag is like going to travel like distances throughout the community, everybody's going to get one, and then eventually, like. It gets to the point where where we get to see like almost like a web of some sort where we see where the bags like have went and how they've like um you know gone from place to place and you know that's what essentially what we're trying to do. So All right, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> does, does anyone have um questions for for Louisville about their project Contagious Love? I just love contagious love. Yes. 
<laughs> what has um I have a question. Um, what has like the response been like? Like how how do these families like how do they feel when you guys like welcome them and give them the bags? Like does it make a huge difference? Well, we haven't actually started the initiative. We're still in the planning process right gotcha. now. Um, we're hoping that you know it'll result in you know, uh, with what you just named. Like we hope that that'll be like the effect. Um, but for now, like we're still in the planning process. But yes, like the end result is we want that to be you know, wanted to have to leave like a big impact on whoever gets the bag. And awesome. And a cyclical effect um, continuing to you know like transmit like you know throughout our neighborhoods. Right. So is it is it does everyone get a bag or is it just like the millennials get a bag? Is it just young people that get a bag or like everybody in the family gets a bag? Everybody, like everybody. Cool. Old, Young women in certain neighborhoods that we're targeting, though, predominantly, you know, black communities, um, right. our neighborhoods, and which we're trying to target. And that's where most mm -hmm. of the violence is transpiring. And all of us have a connect, you know, to those areas. Our families live there and everything. So, you know, we have a personal, like, you know, a connection with those neighborhoods. So, like, you know, everybody's going to be getting one. Like, even though, they're, like, perpetrating the ones who are actually the ones committing the crimes. Like, they're right. not gonna be, they know, need it. <laughs> So, yeah, that's basically um, what we're trying to do. I also forgot to mention uh, there's going to be a Facebook page as well. Uh, we have a, a side project basically like um, called Photo Voice, where it works how it works like um, so you're given like a theme. So say like, you know, the theme is like hope. So like, where do you see hope in your community? We would then like, um, uh, like give the community like cameras basically so they can go around and already use they go to use their phones and go around and like take pictures of what they uh feel represents like you know the theme that we're given we would then go and post it like on the facebook page so that you know everybody like not only uh here in louisville but in america and outside like beyond like will be able to see it and, you know get a uh and get a taste of um what we as african americans view as like hope hopelessness and basically like uh get a basic understanding of, you know, how we're feeling, like, within our neighborhoods. Awesome. Awesome. Questions? No? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, woo um, I, have, I have a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Navi has a question. Navi has a question. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to... <laughs> I just wanted to find out how many groups you have accommodated so far. Again, yeah, like we're just starting, but you know, we basically uh, plan to accommodate like all those non neighborhoods in which like uh, make up the West End. So uh, those are like uh, people, you know, will be serving through this initiative. Yeah, a thousand, a thousand, yeah, persons, we plan to, a thousand yeah, like the first phase, we want to like have like a thousand bags, you know, to give out, like starting off. And based on the response we get, we would then um, make the necessary uh, accommodations to serve everyone else. So, like right now, it's still in the planning process, but it's going to happen. Nice. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Has Ghana joined us? Oh, I see Felix, though. Yeah, so, so oh, good, good, they're there. Okay, he just, yeah, we are. okay, Ghana, let's hear yeah. from you. All right, um, hi, everyone. Um, this is Ghana. The project we are looking on water sanitation, uh, a place. I think you're covering the camera. Lulu, Lulu, yeah. Felix, I think you're covering um, the camera. Um, I, um, I think your hand is covering the camera. There we go. Oh, please can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, the, um, <laughs> I'm using my phone at the moment, so. Can you move your hand? Can I go ahead now? Hello? Can you move your hand, Felix? <laughs> There you go. Yes. Yeah, now are, right? uh -oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, so we're looking at um, we want to do a water 
a sanitation project. Okay. So what we're doing right now, that it has become a necessity because there is no toilet facility in Lolonia. And uh, women, children, and all categories of people either need to go to the beach or use the bushes around. And especially in the, na in the night, they are exposed to predators like snakes and other harmful animals that there have been records of such incidents in the community. Secondly, during rainy seasons like this time, they depend on the small, small waters that are gathered in creatures in the community. And these creatures that water gather in are close to places where they, def uh, they have what is called free range, where people just go to toilet anywhere. And the bridge kids are has decided to look into how we can build toilet facilities and uh, provide some kind of clean water. Uh, for the community. We have been talking back and forth with some of these providers and they have given us an idea about how to use a, a, a semi-divided septic tank that gathers baker waste to produce biogas on one hand and a fertilizer on the other hand. So we're trying to talk back and forth with it. The objective is to be able to provide uh, five toilets for male, five for females, three bathrooms for male, for female, and we'll be able to gather all of these fertilizer and other things to make a living for these people. It's very necessary to avoid some of these fatal incidences in the community as a result of more sanitation and water challenges. Another big problem is the issue of conflicts. Um, there is currently a pipe, but it only comes once in three to two to three weeks. Once the water comes down, the to provide a toilet facility and a bathhouse and a water good drinking water for the community in as a pilot to carry on to other communities. So this is a project we have been trying to run now and working on with our international office. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. So did everybody hear that? You understood what he said? Yes. Okay, excellent. So does anyone have questions? Um, Springfield had to go because it was lunch. <laughs> they had to go there at school and they had to go to lunch. Um, does anybody have questions about Anna? Really, y'all have no questions? Yeah. So you said five toilets for women. Did you say they're building a facility? Yeah. Yeah, but the question was, can you um, get more, uh, say again, Felix, the specifics about what the facility is going to look like or what it's going to, what it's going to have in it? Okay, so we are I'm looking at uh, building a wall facility that uh, has a toilet in it, a water plant with a coordinator. Uh, providing potable water with a, a bath, a, a bathing structure for male and female, a toilet facility for male and female, yeah. and a place where we can provide water, potable water for. Okay, so yeah, shower, showers, toilets, yes. and clean yes. water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you all um, close to, where are you in your process now? Um, we have spoken to um, organizations.
concentrations that do uh, the septic tank that produces the biogas and the fertilizer. We are also talking to other people who are into the business. And uh, I think we are doing this back and forth with the British International Office to pull resources together. So we are in the process of getting, raising up some resources to move ahead. Okay. It may have been a little difficult to hear, but I'm not sure if you understood that the waste that goes through the system, they're going to be reusing that, and it's going to create biogas mm -hmm. and fertilizer, which they'll be able to sell that yes. makes the project sustainable and, and to be using as fertilizer in the agricultural you know, projects in the city. Also, they have this, I just know about this, this chlorinator that, cleans, that um, cleans the water. It produces bleach, is a byproduct of the chlorination, so they'll be able to use the bleach to clean the facility and also to sell it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yes, yes. Where, yeah. where, in, where in Ghana are you located? Where in Ghana are you located? We are located in Greater um, Carriage in a place called Ghana, specifically Lulonia. Which one? Uh, Lulonia. Okay. And how far, how far is that from Accra? Mm -hmm. Today, you should, let's see, one, uh, one and a half hours drive with no traffic. Okay. Mm -hmm. traffic will be, will be like two hours. Okay. Or two, three, 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 three minutes. Mm -hmm. We're not hearing you that great, mm -hmm. but the person who asked you that question is Susan. She's the one who's planning to travel to Ghana. Um, in February, and so we've been wanting the two of you to connect. So we'll make sure after this, the two of you connect. Right, I'll be, I'll be glad to talk about the food with her. Okay. So that we'll see how we can meet when she comes. Excellent. Uh, I will welcome her. Welcome to Ghana. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. So I, I think that we are actually finished with all of our presentations today. And um, I really, really hope that this has been a, um, a positive and edifying experience for everyone. Um, we're still you know, working out our, our technology. Hopefully we'll be using this technology in the future. We'll be using Google Hangouts for um, our Bridge Kids, our regular Bridge Kids meeting. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to let Amanda actually wrap up for us. OK. Well, first of all, like Stacey said, thank you, everybody, for your patience and for getting on and working with the technology. Um, it was awesome to hear about all of these great projects that are going on. It's so exciting. And we definitely want to stay updated. So please keep sending pictures of what's going on. Send us emails. Send us, send us everything that we can because this is really fantastic. And we want to celebrate you guys. Um, so what I'm going to do is this. Um, this video is being recorded, so it's going to it's live on Facebook right now. But the video will also be able to be shared. So I'm going to send a link to everybody that was on the call, so you guys can um, watch it with your groups again if you want, and you can re-listen to what was going on, um, if you missed anything. And um, like Stacy said, this is going to be our format that we're going to try and use for our meetings. Um, that way, if, you know, if we're not able to jump on a meeting due to time changes or due to scheduling issues, you know, then that way you'll still get a link to the actual meeting and still be able to feel like you were there and to stay, in, and stay uh, involved and encouraged. So that's definitely what we want to do. So next steps, I'll be sending an email with the link. Um, thank you guys for everything. This has been fantastic, and I'm uh, really excited about where we're going to go with this. Yes. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. And this is what I thought on a Monday morning, you get to talk to folks around the world. So. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> all right, guys. Okay. Good Everyone job. have a blessed and beautiful day. Yes. Um, let's sign off now. <laughs> signing off with love. Love you. Signing off with love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.